What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given and today it's a hatball world and we're all just living in it. We're gonna take a look at a Pied Piper game today that starts off basically just picking up a bunch of animals with plus one plus one on them and by the end turns into something truly magical. We start off by picking up this golden chicken and we actually get absolutely owned by this trophy hunter. They slay against us, so we take four damage on the first combat and we're gonna take a little bit more damage even so as we've got a forbidden fruit in our second shop. We'll use that to pick up this polywoggle in addition to this pumped up goat, but never passing a polywoggle on Pied Piper. Always gotta pick up all of those that we see. Uh, you might have caught this at the beginning of the video. Uh, this game was actually played last season towards the end of October, but I was doing really, really well towards the end of October and almost wind up cracking into the top 100 of gamers. And then uh, I tried harder to get into the top 100 and wound up falling down the leaderboards a little bit, uh, but very, very close. And uh, that felt great. As I was saying previously, because uh, all of this was post heart attack stuff and obviously I had a little bit more free time to just be playing Storybook Brawl, wasn't really doing anything else, but um, it, was, it was nice that I felt like I could still do it. I could still hang with the big boys and compete and uh, play the game pretty well. So was pretty excited for that, uh, just for some some context and, and to talk about some, some personal stuff there. Um, yeah, doing well with all of that stuff, I think, and uh, just trying to improve. Just started some physical therapy and uh, been trying to eat better every day and, and watch all that, losing a little bit of weight. You can't really tell because I've been super beardful. Um, I actually, I'm not super, I, I kind of don't really want to shave because I don't want to cut myself because I'm on so many blood thinners. Obviously I could trim my beard or something like that, but just letting it grow out right now for the winter. Anyways, back to this game. We slay with Polywoggle, get a prize pig. That's really sweet. We wind up picking up another prize pig as well as tripling our goat. And then I skip the treasure because we can pick up this kitty cup purse in the shop. Um, wasn't super interested in any of those treasures was like the main reason that I did that. And uh, unfortunately, this combat just works out perfectly that all of my prized pigs die. So a little bit unfortunate, but here we go. Like I said, it's a hat ball world. We'll triple that prized pig and pick up a crystal ball on this turn. And then I will wind up flipping over the donkey as my second play of the turn just because I wanted to make some use of this crystal ball though after thinking about it for a little bit longer another prized pig in this shop as well as a mummy I'm kind of interested in these characters mummy will work well with <coughs> excuse me the queen of hearts that we just picked up and prized pig could uh, potentially be good like we're pretty strong and I've talked about this a little bit before but one other way secretly to fuel those crystal ball shenanigans is by with kitty cup purse and prize pig so maybe we could make something fun happen with that we are just barely able to have our prized pig survive here so a really really good turn for us and then we'll cap that off by being able to pick up a pair of wretched mummies which we could actually triple right now I wind up going Going for the genie's witch which throws a worm root onto one of those mummies and then I will lock onto the third one try to find that Merlin's hat but even beyond just finding Merlin's hat we're really really strong right now Queen of Hearts plus this pair of mummies that's really good and then the strength of our board right now can just help us to keep these prized pigs alive and altogether I think that that is a really really good start to the game because we might be able to walk away from each turn with as much as six bonus cash. That's really, really strong. So we'll see how much of this we are able to make happen against Rumpelstiltskin, the um, last place player in the lobby. And uh, yeah, it's going to go pretty well. We're going to get to keep both of our... Oh no, I'm sorry. They do take out our lesser prize pick. My queen didn't trade with their queen. So we get to keep four extra gold into this turn. So that's still pretty great. And Fancy Pants, I thought, would be the best way on the current board to add some more stats. Helm is te technically the most stats. It just didn't really work 
with the current board. And then I wind up wasting the fancy pants too. I buy the golden chicken. Maybe you should have bought like the hippocampus. We are Pied Piper, uh, but we're gonna try to make some mage things work here. Instead, I'm gonna pick up this wizard's familiar, and then I'm gonna wind up tripling on these gold chickens, taking a look at some tier two treasures though. Nothing really sparks my interest. I think about taking the spinning wheel before ultimately just deciding to skip on it. Uh, we've got enough gold generation here with these prized pigs, though part of the reason that I skipped, to be totally honest, was so that way we could pick up this reckless wager and really bet on ourselves. Again, we're playing up against one of the lower players in the lobby, so I felt like pretty good about my chances to win this, and we are going to be able to do so. We'll actually get a win with our reckless wager and have both of our prized picks survive, so nine bonus gold on this turn. Let's see what we can do with that though. Um, I'm definitely looking for some more triples. We've got Queen of Hearts here, and then I'm also interested in Spellweaver. We'll throw our plus three, plus three on that. And yeah, that's a great addition to this board. I'll pick up another prized pig, because that's a triple. And now I'm looking for Queen of Hearts and prized pig. Not gonna worry about the polywoggles on this one. We triple the Queen of Hearts, which gives us Eye of Aries. Nothing super impressive on that, uh, but still it's something. And then I'll pick up this tiny, just so that way I can feed that to the Kraken. And uh, still looking for another character to add to this board, but I'm gonna wind up picking up a prized pig to end the turn tossing the fancy pants and then I buy a golden chicken and a fireball to finish things off, but definitely feeling very, very strong. We are facing up against the lobby leader in the form of this trophy hunter, and they've got some nice stuff going on, but not nicer than us. We are going to walk away with a win and both of our prized pigs surviving yet again. So yeah, now we're definitely doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a blind mouse because we could potentially find more blind mice because we're playing Pied Piper and we do, which doesn't give us the forking rod, but it does give us Moonsong Horn. So it's something that'll make some of our spells a little bit cheaper potentially. Uh, and then going to wind up tripling up on these golden chickens as well. There are still some good tier two treasures, mainly Big Book of Spells and Potion Master's Beaker. We don't find any of them here, but but I'll go for another Reckless Wager and then throw in another roll. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. We aren't even that strong for the current board, but uh, I think that we are strong enough that we will probably still win and probably be able to keep one of these prized pigs around, uh, which is definitely enough for me. Next turn, we're gonna be on 5.0. We could potentially look for like an Aeon or something like that to make our board a little bit stronger still. Uh, our prized pig is going to survive. That takes an ancient sarcophagus hit and then uh, does eventually go down to a lightning bolt. This is going to be a rather close one by the looks of it, but we do wind up grabbing a tie. So no extra gold on this turn. Instead, we donated some extra gold to Merlin, but that's fine. Uh, I'll wind up picking up some more blind mice yet again. We're gonna take a look for that forking rod, see what we can find. And then I'm going to true love's kiss on my queen of hearts because not really looking to play that for too much longer. So we'll get rid of that, send that up the chain and uh, see what we can turn that into. We'll throw some more spells onto Spell Weaver, giving that some more attack. Uh, that's just a good thing to dump my spells into though. I do think I wind up, uh, I guess not this turn, uh, but eventually pumping some more spells into that soul tack. And I'm, I'm just now realizing the other thing that I did. Uh, I was thinking about using the soul tack to protect both of those prized pigs, uh, but eventually I decide I'm gonna use the soul tack also to protect this uh, spell weaver. It's a little bit more of a high ticket item there. And then the spell weaver can protect the prize pigs if we want to. Uh, my opponent with a crystal ball and some large wizards familiars. Are they going to be large enough? Looks like they will be. So again, we're donating a little bit of gold with prized pig, but now we get to play up against the ghost. So we're done donating. We are going to cash in a little bit here now. No good treasures from that wizards familiar. Pick up another golden chicken. So many golden chickens this game. I guess we are playing Pied Piper. And that's right. I just put this temporary spell 
fell onto the um, Soltak before sending it up the chain yet again. Again, not going to find anything on this Wizards Familiar, but we do find something. We are able to play a Baba Yaga on this board, and now we've got Baba Yaga Aeon, so we could potentially toss the Moonsong Horn and the uh, Merlin's Hat at some point down the line. I'm also going to pick up some extra XP this turn, which is pretty nice because now next turn will be 6.0, and we'll be able to roll for some bigger cards like Scions of the Storm and stuff. I do ultimately wind up making my um, spell weaver and then my mummy go first just so that way I can protect my prized pigs. I basically just decide I want to play the strongest board that I possibly can here so that way my prized pigs will survive in favor of uh, or in lieu of trying to slay with this Aeon. I do still get the Aeon slay um, just not as strong as it like potentially could have been or something. I'm going to wind up throwing a mix -a whistle on one of my prized pigs and then picking up some more golden chickens. Uh, still no great treasures on there, but I'll mix a whistle the uh, Lady of the Lake now again. Then I throw a shard of the Ice Queen on the Baba Yaga. I'm actually not totally sure why I did that, but my spells are cheap enough that I guess it probably doesn't really matter. That gives me an Ashwood Elm, and we'll throw that in the front line here. Then I'll put this prize pig back in, because I got nothing else to play. I'll wind up rolling down a little bit, and at this point, I'm not looking for blind mice. I'm really looking for Aeons to... Um, try to triple and then grab a tier 7 treasure from those and I will end my turn off by using a uh, gingerbread house there just to make my shop and board a tiny bit bigger but I think that we're in a good space right now we are pretty strong with our two mage characters. One of them is going to get Pigomorphed here, so that is a little bit unfortunate. And then the game also crashes. I think we were at 30 health, so let's see if we wind up losing or winning that combat, but we will miss it. And looks like we won it or tied or something, so that's great. Uh, the prize pigs didn't survive, uh, but we didn't take any damage, so I'll take it. And then I will also take this Scion of the storm we are up against the ghost and that does make me consider picking up a hercules uh, but ultimately i just decide i don't want to waste that much gold on picking up a hercules i also did roll past a lancelot plus queen's grace or blessing blessing of the queen queen's blessing whatever that spell is called um so, yeah, potentially uh, lost a chance at a tier 7 treasure there, but I'll either try to triple this Aeon or Scion of the Storm. And again, playing up against the Ghost, I'm going to get a little bit greedy. We're going to play both of our prized pigs yet again up against the Ghost, and we'll see how this one works out. Probably could have played the Mummy, too, instead of the Aeon, uh, but I think it's all going to work out. Our Cupid is going to turn into a pig by the looks of it, but I think we have enough stats in the form of our uh, mages here, our large mages in the front, and then our ranged mage in the back. So yeah, we're going to survive with all of this prized pig gold, 20 gold here as we're rolling down on the turn. So pretty nice stuff. I'm going to wind up going for another mix a whistle on a prized pig. And then, nope, that's not a monster. That one is though. So we'll throw the worm root on that mummy. And then we pick up Sign of the Storm. We still have 10 gold for the turn. So feeling pretty good. Though, I'm not going to go for the knighthood. I just felt like it would be better to ultimately try to triple these Scions of the Storm, grab a tier 7 treasure, rather than uh, just wasting 9 gold and grabbing an upgraded one. We grab a Burning Beard, and then I wind up selling off my Golden Chicken because I really want to transform this Burning Beard and lock it in. And we wind up finding a Shard of the Ice Queen to end the turn off. So that's really great. I'll get to keep Boom Hilda as an upgraded tier 6 character. That was a prized pig at the start of the turn. So feeling pretty good about that mix of whistle chain there. And uh, potentially could have switched around the Cupid and the Wizard's Familiar. Uh, I don't know. Then my Cupid winds up, or my Wizard's Familiar winds up taking out my Cupid anyways. So uh, maybe that was better. I'm not even super sure. My opponent's pumpkin has some nice things inside but we are able to take out the medusa there and then we just have to dodge this siren attack 
and it attacks into the Wizard's Familiar. That was a really, really close one, but we're able to take out the Merlin there ultimately. So pretty good stuff. And now we are going to mix a whistle prized pig again. It worked out for us last turn. Maybe it'll work out again for us on this one. Who knows? And then we're also looking for a scion of the storm triple. I'll mix a whistle that again. And then I will throw in a drink me potion. Should have used the witch's brew before I used the beauty's influence. Small mistake, but what can you do? And then I wind up finding a true love's kiss and I'm able to send this all the way up the chain into an Oni Tyrant, which is temporarily a um, Echo Wood here. But next turn, it'll turn back into an Oni Tyrant. And then I'll lock onto this sign of the Storm Triple. That'll give us that tier seven treasure eventually, just in time, potentially for the finals. It looks like this trophy hunter has fallen off a little bit at this stage of the game. They're really just playing copy cat they're not even really playing trophy hunter shenanigans but maybe that friendly spirit could land and, and do something nice they're gonna get a bunch of pigs which is kind of cute and that monster book is the chance to slay up against cupid it's not quite large as well but it's going to miss the slay so only two spells uh yeah uh, pretty easy to uh, take down that trophy hunter there. Now we're on to the finals, and like I said, it is a hatball world. We're going to be picking up world trade. That might even be in the thumbnail as well, who knows. But now we get to make use of this Oni Tyrant, and of course, I'm going to pick up a good boy when we are playing with world tree. Good boy does have some synergies already currently on the board. First off, we just turned everything good, and also it works with the Oni Tyrant. It'll get plus 26, plus 26 when it attacks. But the other cool thing that actually makes Hat Ball World a real combo is everything gets a buff when I cast a spell because of Aeon. So that's pretty cool as well. Everything got uh, a little bit of extra stats here. Not too much as we only have one non-upgraded <coughs> Aeon. Um, but there's not too much time left in this game either. We just picked up a world tree. We're looking significantly bigger than my opponent now. I mean, they're looking big too. Um, we're just looking bigger <laughs> uh, once that good boy gets in. And uh, don't even really want another Scion of the Storm. Just want more things to go along with this good boy like another good boy maybe so we'll pick that up we'll bench the aeon and that's still cool because it still does what it needs to do while on the bench and then we throw a few more spells on the good boy to end out the game and because this is looking like potentially the final turn i sell my cupid and try to throw in one more roll to see if we can find anything else just winds up being a healing potion but still the healing potion gives us a little bit more stats on these good boys because of the aeon like we said but really just i mean double good boy plus oni tyrant here that's all you really need to know we're gonna have a pretty strong board going into the finals and i think we are going to be able to find the win here so um yeah we just need uh the back line to survive really and uh that's pretty good so pretty nice one um definitely haven't messed around too much with world tree on mages so this was fun uh even if we only got to do it for a little bit it was a little bit short-lived because it took us a little bit to find the triple there but eventually we find the triple and we find the win that is going to be it for me today guys thank you very much for watching i'm no lux given peace